Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. I want to talk to you today about some iPhone 5 rumors. The rumor mill uh, has been going crazy over the last few weeks, and I thought it would just be a pretty good time now to just give you a little recap and sort of condense all those weeks of rumors into one sort of finite package for you. I'm going to start off with some of my expectations and then go to a few of the stretches. Um, and of course, once we get closer to, to a time frame for this launch, because right now we're not really sure, I'll come back and give you a little update. Uh, but for now, we're thinking this is going to be a September launch as opposed to that June-July window which we were shooting for and which we've seen for the past four incarnations of the iPhone. Uh, this could possibly be discussed at WWDC, although I predict WWDC is going to be more of a software event for OS X Lion as well as iOS 5, so I really would not be surprised at all if we didn't really see any sort of hardware mentions at WWDC. Also, this is going to be an evolutionary update, basically an iPhone 4 refresh or a spec bump, uh, if you will. This isn't going to be uh, the jump that we saw from the iPhone 3GS to the iPhone 4, from the iPhone to the iPhone 3G. This is going to really be the jump that we saw from the 3G to the 3GS. So internal components uh, will be refreshed, but I expect the co cosmetically to be very much the same as it is now, which is actually pretty good if you have cases. Um, so the first thing, the CDMA version and the GSM version will be the same. Uh, right now, the CDMA version of the iPhone 4 is actually a Qualcomm chip that supports CDMA and GSM radios. So in the future, Apple will be able to put one you know, radio into all of its phones, and then there won't be a different model. I, I expect it will just be able to pick it up and choose either AT&T or Verizon, and it won't be different. And of course, cosmetically, it will be the same uh, as well. Now, the big... <laughs> refreshes are coming up. So an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p video recording. Uh, we kind of saw back one of the Sony higher-ups a few weeks ago said something about supplying Apple with image sensors, which up until this point they haven't because Apple hasn't used Sony cameras or Sony lenses in any of their iPhone or iPad 2. So we kind of expect that to be from Sony. The, basically this is kind of um, similar to the sensor that we've seen in Sony Ericsson devices, some of their new ones that are coming out this year, that 8 megapixel sensor. So I, I, I would suggest or suspect that that 8 megapixel camera would be pretty good, which is actually kind of nice because Apple really uh, hasn't taken still photography very seriously. The iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4 both had cameras in them, even or they all had cameras in them. Video recording was introduced, that revolutionary feature was introduced with the iPhone 3GS. And that was sarcasm, by the way. Uh, but they've not really taken still photography very seriously, um, because even with the, you know, the iPad 2 and the iPhone 4, still images kind of iffy at best. Um, so an 8 megapixel sensor from Sony, that'll probably be a good thing, and I completely, I can totally see the advertisements now, I'm taking pictures and likening it to quality that you, you know, see on a low-end DSLR or a high-end point shoot. I can just see the, the Apple marketing machine working right now. Um, now for what's powering this device, an improved GPU, probably the same one we see in the iPad 2. Conversely, that Apple A5 chip, again, the same one that we saw in the iPad 2. Dual core will probably be in the iPhone 5. Now I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little bit uh, throttled down in terms of processing speed, the same way that the Apple A4 chip was a gigahertz in the iPad, and I believe it was actually throttled down to 800 megahertz in the iPhone 4, although uh, nobody really knows exactly what they did there. It could just be uh, dynamic throttling, if you will, just for CPU perform or battery performance. Um, moving on though, uh, it, memory updates. You know, we saw from the iPhone to the iPhone 3GS, it went from 4 to 8 to 8 to 16. The 3G to the 3GS went from, you know, 8 to 16, 16 to 32. But the 3GS to the iPhone 4 stayed at 16 to 32 gigabytes of storage. I completely expect that to be to be bumped up as well. So 32 would be your new low-end model, your new 199 price point, and 64 would be your 299 price point. Uh, and in white and black at launch, you know, we're starting to see now a lot of speculation that the iPhone 4 will finally be launching in white by the end of this month or early next month. So clearly, uh, that's something Apple wants to have in the iPhone 5, especially because the, the whole white debacle has been just a big joke and one of the biggest thorns in Apple's sides, aside, besides antenna gate for the iPhone 4. Uh, speaking of battery life, which we talked about with the throttling of that CPU, I expect battery life to be improved as well. Sort of each generation, CPU performance has gone up and battery performance has sort of stayed the same. Uh, so clearly they're going to have to improve battery life. 
ideally with smartphones nowadays, you need to be able to get one day of moderate to heavy use out of it. Uh, mostly moderate. With the iPhone 4, I can do that. But if they're going to, you know, improve the CPU and GPU, clearly, you know, they're going to need to use a new battery technology or just increase the capacity of the current one. But again, this is probably going to be in the same size. So uh, we'll, we'll see what Apple can do with that. And finally, the biggest thing, redesigned antenna. We, we know about antenna gate. We've had videos about it. It's been a huge thing. It's why Consumer Reports said this was their, be their favorite smartphone, but then couldn't recommend it because of the antenna issues that it had. Uh, clearly, they're going to have to redo something with that. They say it's not that big of a deal. They trivialize it. They no longer give free cases for it. Uh, but obviously, it's a problem if it's gotten this much attention. So they're not going to release another model uh, with that issue. That would just be silly, uh, even if they, again, they tried to trivialize it and play it down. But they're not going to release another model with it like that, because that really wouldn't make any sense. <clears throat> so those are, pro those are my expectations, what I really expect. That new camera, the new processing power, and of course the memory and, and battery bumps, uh, in, in addition to the improved antenna system. <laughs> but now let's talk about stretches, 4G. This is probably one of the biggest reasons uh, why people have been speculating a delayed launch or a September launch as opposed to a June-July. I really don't see 4G coming with the iPhone 5 simply because uh, it drains so much battery at this point to have a 4G radio. Uh, it wouldn't really make sense for Apple to throw it in there because they, they really know that if battery performance is bad, especially because there's no user replaceable battery options for the iPhone at this point and there won't be in the foreseeable future, it would kind of be a really big turnoff if your device could only get through half the day and it would probably be a phone that you couldn't even use. Uh, unlike, uh, you know, a friend of mine has the Droid Incredible, he has three batteries that he hots, that he swaps out throughout the day. Uh, and that's not even 4G, so that's something Apple really doesn't want to have. And conversely, more U.S. carriers. Right now we have, uh, you know, Verizon Wireless had their launch in February, I believe. Um, and uh, I just lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Uh, but anyway, AT&T and Verizon Wireless both have it. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Sprint could get on that bandwagon because they use CDMA technologies. Uh, and, and, of course, T-Mobile, which maybe being purchased by AT&T, depending if the Justice Department approves it. So uh, I would really think it's kind of a market they want to move into, especially because Android is now on all the platforms. They have multiple hardware vendors. They, Apple really wants to stay competitive and really have iOS in the hands of a lot of consumers. So it would kind of just make sense at this point. You know, they don't have an exclusive deal with AT&T anymore. Verizon Wireless signed a non-exclusive CDMA deal with Apple. So I would not be surprised at all if uh, that, that happened. But again, this is kind of a stretch. I don't see this happening you know, in September. I could see this happening maybe by the iPhone 6 incarnation or something maybe like the way Verizon Wireless launched halfway through, uh, but I don't see that happening in September. Another thing, a larger screen, a 4-inch screen as opposed to 3.5 inch, of course would have to keep that Retina uh, pixel uh, DPI or pixels per inch, not, not DPI, uh, simply because that's something that they've marketed so heavily with the iPhone 4 that's going to stay true in the iPhone 5, so even if they you know, increase the screen size, they would still have to keep that density and keep that clarity that we've all become. That's basically one of the best features of the iPhone 4. Uh, but again, that's sort of a stretch. I really think that the iPhone 5 will still be in that same form factor and will still be at that 3.5 inch state. Uh, here's something that's pretty, maybe, maybe not, probably the, the least of a stretch, but the most of the expectation, that kind of didn't make any sense. but. Basically, uh, something that I'm really wishy-washy on is NFC, Near Field Communication. I can see a lot of the reasons why this would be good. It makes it really easy. You could carry around just, let's say, your smartphone, and you wouldn't have to carry around a credit card because that's all in one device. Although I still um, you know, think that NFC support is very young. There's not a lot of support for it at all. Um, and again, that would probably... Uh, impact battery life to have another thing going on inside of it. So I really wouldn't be surprised if they didn't include it, but I definitely think that down the road NFC support, you know, will become a standard feature in smartphones. Now the last thing I just want to say is a redesign will be likely with the next update, which is slated for mid-2012, so the iPhone 6 generation will probably have a new look. Similar to the way the 3G and the 3GS were basically the same, that's how I predict the iPhone 4 and this next fifth generation iPhone to look. Um, 
So those are basically my expectations. I'd love to hear uh, your feedback in the comments section below. Do you think an 8 megapixel camera is completely crazy? Or do you think uh, you know an LTE version is a necessity for the next generation of the iPhone that will be launching in either June, July, or September? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.